Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of ICT Qatar, it's my pleasure to, uh, it's, a, it's our pleasure to work with uh, Gardner on this event, and we hope that you will enjoy the interactions and discussions this morning. What I'd like to do is to share with you some thoughts and ideas about how we in Qatar are progressing towards the knowledge society, as well as some strategic directions that we think would be useful to guide us, guide us into the future. ICT Qatar supports our national development goals through the use of ICT. And uh, our, we, we aim through the use of ICT to enrich the quality of life in Qatar, to increase economic efficiencies and competitiveness, as well as broaden access to, to, to all the information and technologies that people can use. Over the past four years, we have seen very good progress in terms of ICT development in the country. The, the latest report from the World Economic Forum has ranked Qatar as as a 29th, as a, as a rank of 29th among 134 countries. And this is based on the Network Readiness Index, which is a, a way to benchmark ICT competitiveness across countries. So, uh, ranking of Qatar has progressed quite steadily, very steadily, over the last four years, and this is good news for us. Uh, we have also done local surveys of, of the ICT landscape in Qatar, and we have gotten very good evidence that indeed ICT adoption and integration has been happening quite well, uh, be, be it in the schools, in education, in uh, businesses, as well as in government. The, um, as an example on this slide, the, the Hukumi government portal has been an excellent example of how government entities have come together and, and to provide more than 300 online services through, through a single online gateway. So, while there has been good progress, we certainly must not rest on our laurels, and, and we believe that the future ahead of us is going to be a lot more exciting and a lot more challenging. So, what is this future going to be like? And I'm going to share with you some some thoughts about what it's going to be like. We believe that the world around us is moving towards what I, I would call Knowledge Society 2.0. Um, I'm not going to give you a definition of what it is because the world around us is still discovering what it is. And we may never get to fully understand what Knowledge Society 2.0 is until we are, we are through it. But what I can do is to illustrate what it is and what it's going to be by speaking about three particular phenomena. And this, this is just three out of possibly many, many phenomena that will characterize Knowledge Society 2.0. The first phenomena is about the new fuel for hypergrowth. It may seem ironic to, to talk about new fuels in, in our economy here, uh, which is heavy in fossil fuels. But there is a new fuel, and it's called knowledge. Human, human beings started producing information about 20,000 years ago. Now, if, if we liken this history of 20,000 years as a tower of a thousand floors, and someday there should be such a tower in Doha. Uh, now, in terms of the passage of time, the most recent 20 years is nothing more than the top floor of this 1,000 floor tower. <clears throat> However, in terms of the amount of information that has been produced in the most recent 20 years, it is easily 99% of all the information that's ever been produced in the past 20,000 years. So think of it. Think of all this information that we have produced in the last 20 years and how that has changed our lives. And all of that is Knowledge Society 1.0. Now think of in the next 20 years. Think of the, the millions of flaws that you add to this tower over the next 20 years. Think of all the creative use that we, we can find for this new information. 
Think of all the new knowledge-based businesses and knowledge-based professions that will be invented over the next 20 years. This is, a, a, this is what I believe would be a, a, a huge phenomenon driving us forward. The second phenomenon that I would like to highlight <clears throat> is what I would call the shift in the power of E. Until today, we see a lot of the power of E, you know, all the e-commerce, e-government, e-whatever, concentrated on the core, you know, concentrated in the governments, in the big corporations, in the huge central ICD facilities such as data centers. What we're seeing today is that this power of E is rapidly shifting to the edge. <clears throat> The edge, the edge is where we are at, all of us. The individual consumers and our widgets, our devices, we are at the edge. This power, be it knowledge, be it computing power, be it um, the, the freedom of choice or freedom of expression, be it the ability to contribute socially or economically, all of this is shifting rapidly from the core to the edge, where all of us are at. So this, this phenomenal shift in the power of E is going to bring big changes in the ways that we have to develop and manage this power. So I think this is another very important phenomenon. The third phenomenon, phenomenon that I would like to, to just share is what I would call the grand conversions. When, when we worked on IT strategies 10 years ago, and, and at that time when we spoke about technology conversions, we were only talking about how computers, communication networks, and content are converging. That was 10 years ago. Today, that technology convergence is taken for granted. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Today, the convergence that we're speaking about is much, much grander. All of these online tools, social media, which many of you are using, be it Google, YouTube, Flickr, uh, Twitter, etc. All of these tools are converging on you and I, the end users. It's, it's, it's bringing to us, to our disposal, just about everything we need in order to work and to live. So this is a grand convergence that's happening. And with, with this grand convergence on us, on you, you are now able to work and live anywhere, anytime, across cultures. You are able to interact seamlessly, not just man to man, but between man and machine. You are able to, to operate in both the physical and the virtual world. It's like, even as I am having a physical conversation with you right now, maybe your avatar is having a parallel conversation with my avatar online at this moment. I don't know. Okay. So this grand convergence is going to be, again, phenomenal in, in the way that we have to bring ICT to you and exploit that advantage for your company, for your country, for your corporation. So, we realize that as we move ahead for the next, over the next 20 years, things are going to be a lot more exciting and challenging, and definitely very, very different. <clears throat> we, we are beginning a, a process of conceptualizing what might be in our national ICD strategy for the year 2015. And we, we know for sure that through this process of developing the next strategy, we have to learn about, we have to adapt to, and fully exploit all the opportunities that Knowledge Society 2.0 will bring to us. That is going to be very important. And it's not going to be easy, because we're going to discover what Knowledge Society 2.0 is as we go along. We will need a whole new set of 
models of collaboration among the public sector, private sector, and the people sector. It's no longer about everything happening at the core. It's no longer about governments doing e-government, companies doing e-commerce. It's going to be about everybody from the core to the edge participating in this process of making things happen. We're going to need a deep focus on innovation because if you go back to my example of the 1,000 floor towers and you think of the millions of floors that will add to this tower over the next 20 years, it's, not, it's no longer going to be just having more information to use or using that information. It's going to be very much about having very creative use of the information and knowledge. So innovation is going to be key. Another key focus for us, we see moving forward, is sustainability. It is one thing to have a thousand flowers bloom, and it is another thing altogether to have 1,000 ICT initiatives sustained for the years to come. And it's not going to be easy, because initiatives are not going to be run just out of the core, but all of us along the edge are going to be involved, so that there's going to be millions and millions of initiatives that we can all participate in. So we need to take into account all of this phenomena, all of these driving forces, to shape the policy direction that will place Qatar at the forefront of Knowledge Society 2.0. If you have any ideas, thoughts, or questions, I'm all ears. And we hope to work together with you to uh, develop this strategy moving forward. Thank you.